Senators, it is with deep regret that I inform the Senate of the death on the 15th of November 2020 of the Honourable Christopher John Herford AO, a former minister and member of the House of Representatives for the Division of Adelaide, South Australia, from 1969 to 1987. And I'd like to acknowledge his family joining us in the chamber today, joined by a former Speaker of the South Australian Parliament, Mr Michael Atkinson. I call the Leader of the Government in the Senate. Thank you, Mr President. Mr President, I move that the Senate records its sorrow at the death on 15 November 2020 of the Honourable Christopher John Herford AO, former Minister assisting the Treasurer and Minister for Immigration and Ethnic Affairs and former Member for Adelaide, places on record its gratitude for his dedicated service to the Parliament and the nation and tenders its deep sympathy to his family in their bereavement. Mr President, the Honourable Christopher John Herford AO lived a long life dedicated to improving the lives of all Australians and representing our great nation in public service. By the age of 15, Chris had lived on three continents, experiences which would shape his future and inform his worldly outlook. Chris helped to pioneer the widening of the Australian Labor Party, of the Labor Movement, expanding through his life Labor's base beyond its traditional origins. He was a dedicated and strong believer in the Australian Labor Party and an active member of its South Australian branch. And I acknowledge, indeed, colleagues from the South Australian branch of the Labor Party on the other side here in the chamber uh, and, of course, in the gallery. Although I am informed that, apparently, in 1949, at the age of 19, he was somehow found standing at the Scarborough polling booth, handing out voting cards for the Liberal Party at that historic election. I am sure. Uh, I, I note Senator Farrell's interjections, and, uh, and I'm sure that, uh, that the record uh, can be corrected in that regard, if need be. Chris had been born on the 30th of July, 1931, to Monty and Kathleen Herford Jones in Mao, in central India. His father, Monty, was an Englishman from Bristol who served in Gallipoli and France as an officer with the British Army. His mother, Kathleen, was an Australian whose father was a mining engineer. The two met in Rangoon, Burma, in 1919, marrying shortly thereafter. Chris spent his early years living in India, where his father was stationed after transferring from the British Army to the Indian Army. In 1940, Kathleen took Chris, then aged nine, and his younger brother, to Western Australia to attend boarding school at the Jesuit St Louise School, where he remained until he was 14. During these years, Chris spent many of his school holidays on his grandparents' property near Boyup Brook. His grandparents were a great influence on Chris's life, and the time spent on their property was where his love of country, rural and regional Australia blossomed. In 1945, the family travelled to India, uh, travelled to England via India for three months to spend time with their father, who was stationed there until India gained its independence in 1947. Once they reached England, Chris attended the oratory school near Reading to finish his education. At age 18, the family moved back to Australia, settled in Western Australia. And while Chris sought to go to university, earning a living became the priority at the time. He began his working career as a trainee chartered accountant in Perth at Rankin, Morrison and Co. However, a couple of years later, after receiving a telegram from an old school friend, he moved across the country to work in the mining industry in Broken Hill. Broken Hill introduced Chris to the trade union movement and was also where he completed his first accounting qualifications at the Broken Hill Technical College. After two years in the mining industry, Chris had saved enough money to go back to England and study part-time at the London School of Economics, where he would later graduate with honours in economics. I doubt that the path from the mines of Broken Hill to the London School of Economics is an especially well-trod one, or indeed has been trod by many others, if any. It is a testament to the work ethic and drive of Chris that he did make that remarkable journey. During his time in London, he met his future wife, Lorna Seedman, a social worker from South Australia. Chris and Lorna would later marry in 1960, and together 
have five children. While in England, Chris's passion for politics developed and he joined the British Labor Party. In 1958, upon return to Sydney, he joined the local branch there of the Australian Labor Party and a year later moved to Adelaide to be with Lorna, where he was tasked with reviving the Labor Party's North Adelaide branch. Chris would twice stand for the state electorate of Torrens in both 1962 and 1965. Fortunately for him, he was unsuccessful both times. I say fortunately because he was later quoted as saying, he was bloody glad I didn't win because I wasn't really interested in state politics. Apologies to uh, Mr Atkinson in the gallery there. That's, uh, <laughs> Chris's unsuccessful attempts at state politics, and uh, he's not the only one to have unsuccessful political attempts in, uh, in their life. I say personally, and, uh, and looking at you, Senator Farrell, I'll come to that, uh, would lead him to run for the federal electorate of Adelaide in 1969, defeating the then 25-year-old Liberal incumbent member for Adelaide, Andrew Jones. Chris Herford would go on to win Adelaide at seven more elections in 1972, 1975, 1977, 1980, 1983, 1984 and 1987, holding the electorate for 18 years through a remarkable series of wins. Notably, having won Adelaide off of a Liberal MP, his successor candidate in the Adelaide by-election of 1988, I'm sorry to mention Senator Farrell, lost Adelaide to the Liberal candidate Michael Pratt at that election. It's a testament to Chris that he held that seat all those years between those two Liberal MPs short-lived though their careers were in the federal parliament. As a parliamentarian, Chris served in many roles, including as Minister for Housing and Construction, Minister for Immigration and Ethnic Affairs, Minister Assisting the Treasurer, as well as a number of roles in the Shadow Cabinet. Throughout this time, he had many notable achievements. As the Minister for Housing and Construction, he was responsible for the introduction of Labor's first homeowners scheme in 1983. I think back to the opening remarks I made about his work in broadening Labor's base and the traditional origins of our side of politics under Menzies in seeking uh, to make home ownership a core pillar of our party. It's a demonstration of the work that Chris Herford did in reaching out to broaden the Labor Party base through policies such as the first homeowners scheme. Throughout his time as Minister for Immigration, Australia saw a large increase in the intake of migrants, Chris Herford played a key role in the development of the skills-oriented aspects of Australia's immigration policy, which would contribute to our success as one of the most multicultural nations in the world, but also to the successful development of the social licence and support that underpins those immigration policies. Chris, of course, in that long service, had also been a member of the Whitlam government. And during the dismissal in 1975 on his way to question time, he had been confronted in the corridor and informed of what had happened to him, reflecting what a very sad time it was for him at that stage. After his service in the ministry and following the 1987 election, Chris was one of the longest serving members of the ministry and of the Labor Party's parliamentary caucus, and he chose to leave the ministry to make way for new blood. Shortly after making that decision and retiring from the parliament, he was appointed as Australia's Consul General in New York, promoting Australia's interests there with distinction for four years. In returning to Adelaide and to South Australia, Chris accepted the offer of a role at the new University of South Australia, helping to establish a new and important institution that has grown from those early years to serve so many South Australians and create new opportunities for so many. In 1993, in recognition for his service to the Australian Parliament and to Australian-American cultural and commercial relations, Chris was awarded an Officer of the Order of Australia. Like so many of us in this place, family was important to Chris, and I do recognise his family in the gallery today. He was a loved and cherished husband, father and grandfather. Equally like many having to come to Canberra, it was a challenge to be taken away from family. He spoke of 
taking the time to phone his children every day, something that I do and I know Senator Wong does and many others in this place reaching out to keep that contact with their loved ones. But of course in our travels today that's a little easier than it was during the time of service for Chris and those who've gone before us. And he was quoted talking about having to make those calls whether wherever he was from the hot phone boxes in MacArthur uh, or Port Hedland uh, or indeed anywhere around the country or the world making that effort to maintain those connections. And reflecting beyond the work of his posting in New York, he noted the wonderful benefit that provided of allowing him to spend more time with his children, who would often spend long periods visiting or staying with him in those years. The Honourable Christopher Herford AO passed away on Sunday, November 15, 2020, aged 89. His wife Lorna had passed away in 2005. Together they had been married for over 45 years, and Chris reflected that she had been my best friend for about 50 years. Chris and Lorna are survived by their five children, Alex, David, Philippa, Kate and Richard, and eight grandchildren. On behalf of the Australian Government and the Australian Senate, I extend to Chris's loved ones our gratitude for his service to our thankful nation and our sincerest condolences. Senator Farrell. Uh, thank you, Mr President. And I um, thank uh, Senator Birmingham for his fine uh, contribution to this uh, condolence uh, motion. I'd also like to thank Senator Wong for allowing me to make this contribution on behalf of the Labor Party <coughs> um, because uh, Chris Sherford uh, was both my friend, <coughs> my mentor and a, uh, a uh, very important colleague. Um, Chris uh, was the uh, Labor member for Adelaide from 1969 until 1987, and he passed away, as the minister has just indicated, on the 15th of November last year. My abiding memory of Chris is of his big, generous smile. Uh, it would always cheer you up, and uh, his good uh, humour is and will continue to be sadly missed. Uh, today's condolence motion, and I thank the President uh, <clears throat> for this, uh, has been timed to allow many of his family to be here uh, with, uh, with us today to honour the man. And I guess it's appropriate, <clears throat> given Chris's mother's Irish heritage, uh, that uh, it's taking place on St Patrick's Day. Chris's daughter Alex, sons David and Richard, daughters-in-law Margaret and Emma, and uh, grandchildren Georgia, Tom, Claire and Matt are all uh, here with us in the gallery uh, today. Uh, Chris's daughter Philippa and Kate and their families were unfortunately not able to travel to Canberra today, uh, but I believe they'll be watching from, uh, from their home in Adelaide. To all of uh, Chris's family, I offer my deep uh, personal condolences. Um, Chris's funeral was held on one of those very hot Adelaide summer's days, uh, the sorts uh, that uh, are so vividly described by Peter Goldsworthy in his novel uh, Three Dog Night. <clears throat> the funeral was held under strict COVID conditions, unfortunately. Uh, so I was uh, honoured to be one of the 50 people invited by the family to attend the, uh, the funeral. Uh, fittingly, his granddaughter sang a, who's present here today, touchingly poetic version of Summertime from Gershwin's Porgy and Bess, which I'm told was one of Chris's favourite uh, songs. Chris's early years, as a I'll explain shortly, <clears throat> were not what you'd necessarily think as a typical Labor upbringing. So I've wondered since the funeral whether an interest in the issues of racial inequality, which are addressed in Porgy and Best, were perhaps one motivating factor in Chris's uh, joining uh, the progressive side of uh, politics. Christopher John Herford was born in India on the 30th of uh, July 1931 to his English father, Monty, and his uh, Australian mother, Kathleen. 
In 1940, shortly after the start of the Second World War, Chris's mother uh, took him and his younger brother Dave from India to her home state of Western Australia by sea. The thinking was that the uh, war would be short uh, and that the boys could see it out in the care of their grandparents on a wheat farm in the state's uh, southwest. But the war, of course, was longer than expected, and for five years the brothers boarded at the Jesuit school, St Louis, in Perth, and for five years spent uh, the school holidays on their grandfather's farm uh, on, and uh, on the coast. In 1944, Chris's mother, Kath, returned to Australia to collect her sons, braving Japanese submarines in the Indian Ocean. They returned to India for three months before travelling to England, where Chris completed his schooling. In 1949, the whole family migrated to Western Australia um, and uh, they, were, they qualified as uh, so-called 10-pound poms uh, because, of course, Chris's father was, uh, was English. Uh, Chris began training as a chartered accountant in Perth before moving to take up an accountancy job in Broken Hill, a town, of course, with very strong trade union uh, presence. From Broken Hill, where he was uh, a very proud beneficiary of the lead bonus, uh, Chris was able to return to England to study uh, at the London School of Economics, established, of course, by the Fabians, um, on, the, on weekends. He supported himself by working as an accountant for Marks and Spencer. It was during this time that uh, Chris met uh, the great love of his life and his future wife, Lorna, and by 1960 they were married and back living in, uh, in Adelaide. Lorna was a wonderful person and, like so many parliamentary spouses, she selfless, selflessly supported Chris and their children during his many trips to, to Canberra. Uh, she continued to do good works, especially with uh, St Vincent de Paul, where she would often uh, rope in my wife. Uh, and uh, until her untimely death in uh, 2005. Chris, of course, was heartbroken and uh, I know the whole family still miss uh, Lorna deeply. At his funeral, uh, Chris's family spoke about how growing up exposed to the ruling British Raj in India and the caste system there, along with uh, British boarding school and the class system, might have played a role in him becoming such a fine labour man. Chris told his family that his time in Broken Hill, where he was in management, but also in the union, although I suspect it was probably compulsory to join. He may not have had any choice, knowing Broken Hill as I do. And he drank and socialised in the union pubs, and also uh, that played a big role in his uh, future. Chris transferred his membership from uh, Sydney, uh, his ALP membership from Sydney, where he, when he moved to Adelaide and was uh, tasked with reviving the North Adelaide uh, sub-branch of the ALP, a uh, no mean feat in the Playford gerrymandered South Australian electoral system of the time. As uh, the minister said, he stood unsuccessfully for the uh, safe Liberal seat of Torrens in 1962 uh, and 1965. Uh, and while he uh, obviously lost, he gained respectable swings to Labor. He obviously impressed the machine that ran the South Australian branch of the Labor Party at that time, uh, Jeff Virgo, Clyde Cameron and Jim Toohey. Uh, and as a result, his effort, efforts were rewarded in 1969 when he was elected as the federal member for Adelaide and uh, entered the uh, federal parliament. Since the 1940s, Adelaide had largely been a Labor-supporting seat, but it fell to uh, Liberal Andrew Jones, one of the youngest uh, ever members of the House of Representatives in the uh, coalitions all the way with LBJ landslide of 1966. But the people of Adelaide quickly realised their mistake. Jones proved unpopular and Chris regained uh, the seat for the Labor Party with a resounding 14.3% swing at the uh, Don's Party election of 1969. That's right, Don's Party. That was when it was. 
Uh, he turned Adelaide into a safe uh, Labor seat in one stroke, and uh, Chris won enough votes on the first count to take the seat without the need for preferences. He, uh, and he held Adelaide until the end of uh, 1987, when he resigned to become Australia's Consul General in New York. As the minister said, uh, his resignation triggered the 1988 uh, Adelaide by-election, the so-called uh, timed uh, telephone uh, call uh, by-election. <coughs> Uh, that uh, by-election became my first very unsuccessful run for parliament, um, and I know he was uh, dis very disappointed uh, when we were unable to hold his seat on his departure, but the less said about that campaign, the better. <coughs> uh, but I'd like to say a little bit about Chris's time in parliament. Being an accountant by trade is perhaps unsurprising that one of Chris's first roles in the par parliament uh, was on the Joint Statutory uh, Committee of Public uh, Accounts, and he served on that committee from 1969 until 1973, uh, including uh, six months of chair of that committee. Chris's other committee services included uh, chair of the Joint Standing Committee on Prices from May 1973 to November 1975, a member of the House Standing Committee on the Standing Orders from 1975 and uh, again from 1980 to 1983, and as a member of the uh, Expenditure Committee in 1976. After the Hawke Labor government was resoundingly uh, elected in 1983, Chris was appointed Minister for Housing and Construction in the first uh, Hawke Ministry from March 1983 until December 1984. <clears throat> he was promoted to Cabinet in the second Hawke Ministry as Minister for uh, Immigration and uh, Ethnic Affairs until February 1987. At that time, he replaced Don Grimes as Minister for Community Services, following Grimes's announcement that he would not seek re-election. Chris also served, um, importantly, as Minister Assisting the Treasurer, where he helped out a very young and ambitious Paul Keating from uh, May uh, 1983 to July 1987. Chris made a significant contribution to the Hawke-Keating era that led to the opening up of the Australian economy, uh, which itself led to almost 30 years of uninterrupted economic prosperity for this country. After the 1987 election, uh, Chris withdrew from the third uh, Hawke ministry. And after retiring from parliament at the end of that year, this became Australia's Consul General in New York, a, a uh, role that he performed with distinction for, uh, for four years. Although still only in his early 60s, Chris never returned uh, to public life as such after his return to New York, and I think that was probably a loss to, uh, to South Australia. In recent years, uh, myself and Michael Atkinson, who's in the chamber today, the former Speaker of the South Australian House of Assembly, um, uh, would join Chris for lunch at his uh, North Adelaide apartment, where uh, we would spend uh, the afternoon reminiscing about the good old days. Um, and I'd like to say a few words at a personal level um, about my friendship with uh, Chris. I first met Chris when I joined the Labor Party in 1976. Seems like a very long time ago now. I lived then where I do now, in uh, Little Sturt Street in Adelaide uh, CBD, and Chris was my local federal member of parliament. Uh, for some reason, Chris uh, befriended me, a young lawyer uh, for the Shop Assistance Union, uh, which wasn't an easy thing to do uh, with the memory of the labour split of the 1950s uh, still fresh in the minds of many in the ALP. Uh, the groundbreaking Dunstan decade was soon to come to an end. The ALP was split between the centre-left, um, who backed uh, Bill Hayden in South Australia, and the rampaging left under Peter Duncan and Nick Bolkus. The right, based on the uh, Shop Assistance Union, which advertiser <coughs> journalist Ration Randall Ashbourne said uh, con con could conveniently meet in a telephone, book, uh, telephone booth, uh, was just beginning to grow. In 1984, Chris broke with the ruling 
uh, centre-left group uh, around uh, John Bannon and established Labor Unity uh, at a meeting held at Chris's house in Finnis Street, North Adelaide, where all of his uh, children uh, grew up. In attendance were Bob Hawke supporters Graham Richardson and Simon Crean, as well as local, uh, locals uh, Michael O'Brien, Paul Holloway, John Bogue and myself. It was a meeting that ultimately led to the modern South Australian Labor machine, which with the uh, left's Patrick Conlon led to an unbroken 16 years of Labor government in South Australia, the most successful government in the modern era. Uh, our branch owes a sincere debt of gratitude to Chris Herford. Uh, when later Rep. Michael Atkinson joined us, joined us a, a young advertiser journalist who became uh, Attorney General and Speaker of the South Australian Parliament. On one occasion, as Labor Unity were beginning to grow, we were suddenly entitled to two national conference positions for an up-and-coming national conference uh, meeting. Michael and I uh, presumptuously decided that we would fill those two positions uh, and go down to Tasmania and rep represent the group down there. However, Chris quickly disavowed us of that idea and made it clear that he would be a delegate along with my boss, uh, John Bogue. Michael also reminded me uh, this morning of a, a trip Chris took to Canberra when he was surprised to see Ron Owens, the very burly Secretary of the Builders Labourers, Labourers uh, Union, sitting up at the pointy end of the plane. Um, and he expressed some surprise uh, that Ron would be up there. And Ron, quick as a flash, said, nothing was too good for the workers or their representatives. Chris, <coughs> brand of sensible progressive policies, uh, has of course set the branch up for a return to a government uh, led by Peter Malinowskis at the next state election. On behalf of the Federal Labor Party, I wish to thank Chris for his contribution to our success and to the betterment of our nation. All of us can honour his memory by following the example that he set of working, uh, of working to reduce inequality and to make Australia a fairer place, where people from all work, walks of life can share in the nation's prosperity. Chris Herford was a fine, fine man, and he will be sadly missed. May he rest in peace. I ask all honourable senators to join in a moment of silence to signify assent to the motion. The motion is carried.